Hi everybody. Nice to see you again. Okay, now, do you remember the other day we read a story called Jack and the Beanstalk? And I had a look through this book again last night and I found another version of it and I really like this. If you haven't read the other one, have a read of that and then read this one or vice versa. Read this one first and then the other one. Look for the similarities and the differences because it's quite interesting, okay? So here we go. Jack and the Beanstalk. There was once a little boy called Jack who lived with his mother. They were very poor and one day his mother said, Jack, you must take our cow to the market and sell her for we have no money left. Jack set off to the market and he had not gone very far when he met a funny little man. Hello, Jack, said the funny little man. Where are you going this fine day? To sell my cow, answered Jack. The little man pulled a bag out of his pocket and emptied seven brightly coloured beans into the palm of his hand. They were the most beautiful beans that Jack had ever seen. I will give you my seven magic beans in exchange for your cow, said the little old man. Jack wanted those beautiful beans very much, so he gave the cow to the funny little man and then went back home with his bag of beans. Look, mother, he called, look at my beautiful beans. You sold our cow for seven beans, <laughs> you silly boy, she replied astonished and she burst into tears and threw the beans out of the window. That night they went to bed hungry. Jack was so hungry that the grumbling noise his tummy made woke him just as the sun came up the next morning. He got out of bed and looked out of his window, but all he could see was huge green leaves. He ran out of the house and saw that one of the beans had grown overnight. It had leaves as big as a dustbin lid and a stem as thick as four elephants' legs and it disappeared into the clouds. Jack, Jack just had to climb it. Up and up and up he went. Just as he felt too tired to go any further, he reached the top and found himself in a magical place. There was a huge castle in front of him and Jack knocked on the door. It was opened by an enormous lady. Please, said Jack, I'm tired and so very hungry. Would you give me something to eat and a chair to sit in for a while? The enormous lady looked worried. Ah, this castle belongs to a wicked giant, she said. If he finds you here, he will eat you. Just then, the floor and the wall started shaking. Oh, well, that's him coming home now, cried the lady, and she hid Jack in the teapot. Fee, fi, fo, foy, I can smell a little boy, shouted the giant. Oh, nonsense, said the enormous lady. It's the smell of your stew simmering on the stove. Jack listened to the giant. He was really fierce. He shouted at the enormous lady and tried to hit her with his big stick, but she moved too fast for him. When he had eaten his dinner, he told her to bring hen to the table. It was a beautiful golden hen. And when the giant said, lay me an egg, the hen laid an egg. And then another and another until there was a whole basket full. Then the giant fell asleep. At once, Jack crept out of the teapot and tucked the hen under his arm and climbed back down the beanstalk. The next day, Jack and his mum had eggs for breakfast and then Jack's mother sent went off to market with two huge baskets of eggs to sell. As soon as she had gone, Jack climbed up the beanstalk and knocked on the door again. Once again, the enormous lady opened it. Oh, you shouldn't have come back, she wailed. If he catches you, he'll eat you all up. Just then, 
The floor and the walls of the castle started shaking. Quick, cried the enormous lady, he's coming home. And she hid Jack in the sugar bowl. Fee, fi, fo, foi. Oh, I can smell a little boy, shouted the giant. Nonsense, said the enormous lady. It, it, it's just all sausages sizzling on the stove. The giant was even more horrible to the enormous lady than he had been the night before. He tried to trip her up when she served his sausages. He complained about his food and he, put his, he stuck his tongue out at her behind her back. When he had finished his dinner, he told the enormous lady to bring him sacks of gold and his magic harp. The giant counted his gold as the magic harp played beautiful music and soon he nodded off to sleep. As soon as he was fast asleep, Jack climbed out of the sugar bowl and hoisted the sacks of gold onto his back. He picked up the harp, put the harp was magic and started shouting, Help me! Help me! Help me! I'm being stolen! Jack ran as fast as he could, but the giant woke up and started to run after him. The enormous lady tripped the giant right over, but he got up again and followed Jack to the magic bean plant and started to follow him down. Jack moved faster than he had ever done in his life. And when he reached the bottom of the beanstalk, he grabbed an axe from a pile of firewood and started to chop down the beanstalk. No sooner had he struck the first blow than there was a blinding blue flash and the magic plant and the giant disappeared forever. Jack and his mum now had enough money to live happily and that's just what they did for the rest of their lives. Hmm, and so did the enormous lady. Because when the giant disappeared, she was left with the castle to herself and no wicked giant to boss her about. <laughs> I like that ending. I think it's great because that giant was rotten to, his, to, to the, the enormous lady, wasn't he? Anyway, goodbye from the Rainbow Book and goodbye from Mr. C. You take care. Enjoy yourselves. Bye-bye, bye-bye, bye. -bye, bye, -bye.